Hey everyone, it's Joe from GreenLightSound.com, and today we've got a look at two channel strip plugins from Waves, and this is sort of the battle of the generations because we've got two consoles that came from two different eras. On the left-hand side, we've got the SSL 4000E series, first released in 1979, used on countless records since. Um, many of these consoles still in use today, commercially released, so if you had the money, you could have gotten one of these from 1979 on. On the right-hand side, we've got the Abbey Road Studios EMI TG12345. The EMI engineers built these specifically for Abbey Road Studios, purpose-built for that studio. And it's EMI's first solid-state desk, used to record the Beatles' Abbey Road album, Pink Floyd's Dark Side of the Moon. It had a compressor limiter on each channel, which was unique at the time. The dynamic section was based on the EMI Alltech compressors and Fairchilds, but they do sound different because the desk is solid-state, and the Altex and Fairchilds are tube compressors. In comparing this drum recording I'm going to play, the first issue, it's a live recording, so there is a lot of bleed between the other instruments and the drum part. So in this case, the SSL is much easier to work with in that it is much more fully featured than the EMI desk is. The SSL has a full filter section, a much more flexible and feature-rich EQ section, a gate expander, which doesn't exist on the EMI desk, um, the dy dynamic section is a little bit more flexible as well, so you know it's got a lot more going on in terms of features than the EMI. On the other hand, the EMI is a cool exercise in how to deal with problems with minimal tools. They did it for years back then, the recording still sounded great, so you can still get around it with the EMI. If you want to take a look at the other video I have on this desk, you'll get a lot more detail about exactly how the controls work, what the frequencies are for the treble and bass band, how the dynamic section works, which is a little bit different than most channel strips. But for now, we're just going to kind of hear them back to back. First thing I'm going to do is play a recording with just the processing of the SSL on every drum channel. Here it is. Now we'll hear that same little clip with the EMI. So one of the things I want to do is kind of go very quickly through some of the processing I did first with the SSL and then how I tried to compare the EMI to it and get kind of the same features out of that one. First of all, on the SSL, on the kick drum channel, I just filtered out the very low end, the top end, have typical kick drum EQ where I'm boosting the upper mids for a little bit of that kick drum bite, pulling out some of the low mids, getting that woofiness and boxiness out of the kick drum boosting the very low end around 60 hertz. In this one, I'm using the gate to get some of that bleed between kick drum hits out of there, and then the compressor section uh, using as I normally would to get some snap out of that kick drum. For the TG12345 in this case, engaging the compressor, trying to get as much control in that signal as I can without crushing it, using the mix knob here to dial it back a little bit, and the side chain so it's not having the low end of the kick trigger too much. EQ, the top end boost to get some of that kick drum smack, pulling out 600, sorry, 500 hertz, pulling out 6 dB, and then boosting the low end. That's one of the things with the EQ here is you have these presence frequencies between 500 hertz and 10K, and then uh, booster cut on any of these frequencies, and then the top and bottom end shelves, and that's it in terms of EQ. For snare drum, typical processing here, SSL, pulling out of that very, very low end. A little bit of that bite of the snare around 5 or 6K, sorry, 6.4K in this case. Boosting again here around 1.24K. Boosting a lot for body down around 200 hertz, nothing going on the low shelf there. Gate again for between the, uh, the hits to get some of that bleed out. And then typical compression settings on the TG12345 again, compressors engaged. Mix now is about halfway on the EQ, pushing that top end, pushing out a little bit of that mid upper mid range bite, and then pushing out a little bit of that bottom end for body. The toms are pretty simple. The toms are usually boost some low end, cut some low mids, boost some upper mids for a bite. Compression gate on both toms. Try to do the same thing with the TG12345, boost the top end, 
pull out a ton in the mids, 800 here, pulling out all the way 10 dB, boost the bottom end and compression. Hi-hats, barely anything going on here, just a little bit of high-end EQ from the SSL and the TG desk. For the overheads, the last track here, the SSL, cutting out some of the bottom end, boosting a little bit at AK, pulling out a little bit at 750 hertz, boosting a little bit at 2.5K, and then a little bit of a low-end boost. Again, compression and gate going on for the TG12345. One of the only different things I did here is I did push the spread up a tiny bit, which is cool. You can increase the stereo width a little bit on your stereo tracks with that knob. But again, typical EQ and compression settings here. So I'm gonna play them again, play the, the clip on a loop again, and I'm gonna kind of toggle back and forth between the SSL and the EMI desks. You can kind of hear them back to back. Does it make a huge difference? Does the fully featured SSL make it a huge winner over the TGI desk? Does the sort of vintage character of this one bring out anything cool? So here we go, starting with the SSL first, then I'll toggle back and forth. There we go, two analog modeled channel strips from Waves, the SSL 4000 E-Series and the EMI TG12345. Let me know down below what you think of each console, whether you think I was able to get a decent mix out of the limited features of the EMI desk, whether you prefer the SSL. Uh, don't forget to subscribe if you haven't done so already, and I'll see you in the next one.